Welcome back. I'm here with County Board Chair Katie Crystal and Vice Chair Christian Dorsey who are filling us in on some of the key actions the board took at its October meeting. So let's talk about the closeout of the fiscal year 2018 budget. What does this mean, a closeout? You know, fiscal year 18 finished in sure. June. So closeout is more or less exactly what it sounds like. It's the process of closing out the books, um, balancing what we spent versus what we planned, um, and what of the allocated monies um, didn't get spent. And so this year, um, that amount totals about $22 million, um, a little less, in unspent, unrestricted funds um, uh, that we are then going to, on balance, mm -hmm. uh, both allocate reserves and then carry over to next year. But essentially, um, closeout is saying, what did we plan to spend? Um, did we spend more or less? We are always trying to spend less, as uh, suffice it to say. We don't really have an option to go into the red. Right. Um, so it's sort of how close to that to that zero line are we trying to get. Um, and in fact, in recent years, um, the department's county manager have really managed to a much smaller pool of closeout dollars, which is something that we often heard from the public they really wanted to see. Right. They took that as a sign that the the, the board and the manager were, were um, asking for what we needed and needed what we, a needed what we were asking for. Um, but the uh, the other pretty important stakeholder that was less excited to see us managing closer to zero um, were the rating agencies who really measure our fiscal practices and want to make sure that we stay worthy of that triple, triple A bond rating that allows us to borrow money at relatively low interest rates. Um, so uh, this is perhaps the pendulum swinging a little bit back in the other direction of a little more money at closeout, um, which from the, the point of view of kind of our long-term fiscal picture is perhaps not a bad thing. Um, and I think on this year, uh, in the case of this year, generally results the fact that that the manager and the department heads had, had slowed down hiring in anticipation mm -hmm. of another tough A budget year ahead. Mm -hmm. So what were the key ma county managers then key recommendations for how we allocate those closeout funds? I mean, we you said some would be rolled over. Yeah. How, how's that going to be used then? Well, you know, it's up to us uh, to decide <laughs> how the bulk of that we is used. We get a used. sneak preview here. So, you know, as part of the upcoming budget process, you know, that provides some flexibility for us to to deal with what is a fairly substantial gap that the, the manager okay. anticipates presenting to us as part of the fiscal 20 budget. So that's that's where the bulk of it's coming from. But, you know, those reserves can't, can't uh, we cannot overstate how important those are. You know, I think the analogy for... For many people, that, that, that may help is, um, you know, people who are determining your credit worthiness not only look at how uh, close you come to spending what it is you make, it's also your ability and capacity to save. That's a critical piece. And Arlington, while hewing to a community's desire not to be overtaxed, which is a good thing, absolutely, we were kind of skirting to and maybe falling on the wrong side of demonstrating our ability to save and deal with shocks or headwinds mm -hmm. or uncertainty in, in the government. So we have to balance that. And, and this is a step in making sure those reserves are balanced. Mm -hmm. And then um, we're gonna have some tough, uh, but very community driven processes to determine how we use those other resources. That's exactly right. And one of the things that I think one of our communications and expectations conversations that we'll need to have, um, 16.5 million in the manager's recommendation that I think the board is likely leaning towards adopting, but we'll have a good conversation mm -hmm. about that in November. 16.5 million um, to be rolled over to those discussions in fiscal year 2020, um, which again, kind of consistent with what the community is saying. Mm -hmm. um, we'd like to see not kind of a separate budget allocation process in the fall for closeout and then another one in the spring to talk about it all at once. But the real um, challenge and the nuance that I think uh, we'll have to really emphasize in communicating is this is one-time money, yeah. right? And so the the um, the metaphor that we always use is when your grandmother sends you a birthday check, you know, you don't want to rely on that to pay your <laughs> yeah. rent. Well, this is true. It, right. And so here, you know, there are always one-time costs and opportunities that come up on the budget. Um, planning exercises, for example, are a great mm -hmm. example, or, you know, one-off uh, opportunities to do pay-go for capital. Um, but many of the things that this community prioritizes and wants, whether it's hiring teachers, paying firefighters more to stay competitive, um, uh, or other things, those are ongoing year-over-year right. costs. And so we are going to have a little bit of a, uh, a 
$16.5 million or a lot, actually, that's a big figure, $16.5 million um, carryover amount to think about allocating. Uh, but I think it might be tempting to say, great, $16.5 million, that solves most of that $30 million budget Not gap. At all. And it's that. really <laughs> important to make that distinction, you know, now and, and as we go throughout the budget, yeah. that this is one-time money for one-time priorities. It wouldn't be sound fiscal practice to close an operating budget gap ongoing with that money. And so it, it is still a little bit early to talk 2020 fiscal year budget, but I know you folks have been um, meeting about it mm -hmm. for quite some time now already uh, before that budget um, kind of comes forth uh, for the next year. But I know you mentioned it's going to be another lean year. Yeah. Um, what should the community be prepared for, essentially? You know, I, I think having an honest discussion about all options. And when you talk about all options, that does mean uh, tax rate increases. Uh, if you look at last year, we uh, dealt with just about every uh, fee that we have available to us outside of the property tax rate. But uh, when you're talking about closing substantial gaps, the, uh, our tax base is ba made up on the revenue side about 60% from the real estate tax rate. So that's got to be on the conversation, as will significant program cuts. We did a lot of what many people would call efficiencies yeah, last year. Sure. You know, you don't have those tools year after year. At some point, you've really got to talk about programs and services mm -hmm. as a way to close a gap of the size that we're talking about. So we've, we've predetermined nothing, but there's no way we're going to not have a robust conversation about those um, those alternatives or those possibilities to, to deal with a very significant budget gap. That's absolutely right. And I would even go further as to say in terms of over the last couple of years, um, we've sought to achieve not only efficiencies, we've made real programmatic cuts mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. part of the fiscal 19 budget. Um, we did eliminate programs, et cetera. I think they were all incredibly thoughtful and I really credit the county manager to figure out, you know, what, what what need government maybe not be in the business of anymore? Um, you know, one of the examples I, I give all the time from our last budget process is in a county with the lowest unemployment rate in the, in a commonwealth mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country, do we need to be investing as aggressively um, in job training programs, right? So so we scaled those back. We scaled yeah. that program back cons you know, considerably to really focus on those members of our community most in need. But that's a great example of um, we've done that look, both at efficiencies and then scaling back the, the things that maybe are outside of core government operations. And now we're talking about the things that people really yeah. um, hold sacred, right? right? So uh, it, it's going to be absolutely a difficult conversation. You know, the best thing that we can ask people to do is to participate in the process. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've started actually including in our, uh, about every four years or so, we do a community satisfaction mm -hmm. survey. There were questions about the budget um, there. So we have some good and um, validated survey data to help us with that decision. But we'll do a number of additional community surveys, public hearings, workshops, roundtables, there'll be a lot of ways for people to engage. Um, and I hope that uh, people will join us to the extent they're capable or interested in, in looking at the big picture and recognizing um, that we aren't just a series of individual interests in Arlington County, we're a whole. And we're trying to stay um, strong and healthy together as we weather a challenging budget time. And you know, one thing we know is uh, if, you, if you take the composite recommendation from people when they do surveys or give guidance on the bu budget, it is to maintain services mm -hmm. and keep taxes the same. That's not going to be possible it's, this year. It's, it's so, quite the balancing act yeah. when you try to do that. So, well, I'm sure this is something we're going to be talking about for months to come. Indeed we are. Um, so we'll leave it there for now, and we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, I'm going to ask the board about making it easier to renovate or expand some of Arlington's older, smaller houses, as well as what issues remain to be resolved before the board adopts the Four Mile Run Valley Area Plan. We'll be right back. <music> 